this is Omar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Bum Bum is with me. It's been a long time since we have had you on, Tommy. Yeah, no, it's good to be back and good to be around the boxing once again. So, yeah, a little trip to Dubai because of uh, Carl Frampton's uh, huge, huge fight tomorrow night. But for yourself, that's not a bad one, just getting out to Dubai. Nah, it's nice, but we're here to do a job, do you know what I mean? We're here to, to support Carl and um, get the win tomorrow night. Well, yeah, um, I think it's fair to say this is a 50-50 fight in, in many people's eyes. I think when the fight was first made, Jamel was a slight favourite, but I've seen uh, the, the odds get closer and closer. Um, how confident are you that Carl does the business tomorrow night? I'm super confident, OK, uh, very, very, very confident. I've never seen uh, Carl from tonight. He's performing. I've not known him all his career, but you know I've spent the last uh, four, four fights with him now. And he's, he's a man on a mission, he really, really is. There's so much um, reward at stake for Carl. And he's the best I've ever seen him, not just physically, but mentally as well. Um, he's different, he's different to be around. I've heard that as well from Nigel Travis and Jamie Moore, and that wasn't just on camera, that was off camera. Um, so it wasn't them just building something up. They said he's flying, and I think sometimes these prize fighters, such as Carl, need that little extra edge to get the best out of them and obviously there's so much at stake here that that motivation that extra motivation is on the line tomorrow night. he's got an opportunity to go in there and do something what nobody from ireland has ever done and he is completely 110 percent motivated by that um so i'm really really looking forward to being a part of this this legacy event tomorrow evening what do you think about Jamel? I mean, I've spoke to, to Jamie and Nigel this week and they, they say when they've seen him around, um, he's not looking great at the way. He's been training loads, etc. What's been your impressions of Jamel this week? He, 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 listen, he's a big dude for the weight, massive. But uh, he's a professional and he, he's made the weight, OK? Um, no, one, no one makes the weight easy, all right? Carl has because he's come up in weight, all right? But Jamel's been campaigning at that weight for, for a while. He's made the weight. We're expecting a, you know, the best Jamel here. And, you know, Carl's not beating a guy in there who's um, struggled at the weight. Carl's going to beat a proper, proper world champion tomorrow night. When I spoke to Carl this week, he believes that Jamel made a bit of a, of a mistake coming to Dubai only on the weekend um, with the 11 hour difference from the States to here. Carl's been here for three or four weeks obviously and there's not much of a time difference anyway so he believes Jamel won't have acclimatised for tomorrow night. You, you can't acclimatise and you know what it's got so much hotter here uh, just recently and that heat okay tires you out. I've been here 10 days and the heat has whacked me. Um, it really has and you know I'm still 10 days I probably the last couple of days just started getting to sleep around 11 on a night, but until then it was two, three in the morning. So he's certainly not going to have uh, adjusted to the to the tide difference. And where he comes from, I believe the time difference is even worse. So yeah, I think listen, it's all about timing, and everything has has just played right. Um, you know, he'll have been holding that way. The, the fight got cancelled because of a little uh, hand injury Carl had picked up. So he'll have been holding that weight for much longer, having to be more stricter for longer. Carl's, you know, he's breezed the weight this time. Um, I think everything is right for Carl to go in there and win tomorrow night and win as well in convincing style. Well, we'll find out tomorrow night. It's uh, going to be a spectacular card and main event here in Dubai. Tommy, uh, happily retired. What's been happening with you? How's business back home during, this, during the pandemic as well? I wouldn't say happy retired. <laughs> uh, I miss it dearly, I miss it every single day, but there's only so many times you can go to the well, and uh, the way I fought put a lot of miles on the clock, uh, or should I say the way I chose to fight put a lot of miles on the clock, and, and the timing was right, Jamie Moore did me a huge favour at um, my last fight with Chris Algeri in New York, so I'm, I'm, I've come round to the fact that my days are done. And um, I'm enjoying helping young fighters come up now and uh, try and guide them. I'm really enjoying being a part of uh, the team with, with Nigel and Jamie and listening and learning from them. Um, but, you know, it's, it's tough. I'm, I'm very, very fortunate that I've got a fantastic business back home and I've got so many exciting projects uh, happening. And, you know, I, I say this to a lot of young fighters, 
a lot of people don't think about the, the, the uh, retirement or, or when the day comes. But, but I'm glad whilst I was fighting, I did think about that day. Um, and I did have things to kind of jump straight into and keep me keep my, my, my mind going, do you know what I mean? Keep, keep me involved in something positive as opposed to just being finished and then having nothing to do, no purpose. Purpose is the word I was looking for. You know, I've got a purpose now. I've got a team of 30 uh, staff who all rely on me. Uh, I've got a family, a young family who rely on me to provide for them. So, you know, it's a health and well-being business. How can I sell health and well-being if I don't have my own health and well-being? So you can't sell a dream looking like a nightmare. Good words there. Um, so yeah, considering what's going on in the UK right now, um, how is business? I'm guessing outdoor training is fine at the moment. Business has been very, very tough, but it's, um, I've actually enjoyed it though, to be honest, because it's, it's kind of presented us with a challenge. We've had to innovate. Um, we've had to you know, be light on our feet and, and think. Uh, I think outside the box, so we quickly understood that you could have outdoor gyms. So we opened three outdoor gyms in Hull to um, kind of replicate what we was doing indoors at the three sites we had. We just kind of went into the car park, scaffolding rigs, and it's been good. I've, I've enjoyed the challenge. Um, I've never shied, shied away from adversity in the ring, nor in business, and it's just a game. It really is just a game. And um, I think we're playing the game well, the team, they're all on board. Um, but I think I can see light at the end of the tunnel now. Yeah, I think we all can. Uh, do you want to just give the, the business a quick plug? Yeah, um, so I, oh God, do you know what? I have so many different things going on. Um, yeah, TC60, which is a boutique fitness um, gym. Total conditioning, it's a 60 minute workout. You pretty much con totally condition the body in 4% of the day. Um, and then we've got a health and wellbeing company. We've just signed a mega deal as it happens. We've, uh, well, we've re signed a mega deal with Siemens Gamesa, a blue chip company in Hull, looking after the health and wellbeing. Uh, Coil Health and Wellbeing is a company which it don't really provide off the shelf products, it's a company which goes into other companies, identifies problems and provide solutions in, in terms of well-being. Just to finish off out of interest, obviously, you know, you're in the gym with the boys, etc. I'm sure you, you watch their fights and fighters they're going to fight, etc. and keep to keep up with boxing in terms of what's going on in Jamie's gym. But do you just, out of interest, do you just still watch fights and other fights you keep up is it up to date with boxing? I, I, I love the game. Yeah, I do. I, I still watch a lot of the old fights. If I'm ever on a treadmill, I always take my iPad in the gym. I, watch, I must have watched Gatty Ward. <laughs> 500 times. No wonder they used to fight like that. Yeah, yeah. Gatti was my favourite fighter. And Mickey Ward as well. I had the pleasure of meeting him in Boston and coming to the changing room after my fight. So, yeah. Oh, mate, I'd love... You're starting to miss it now, aren't you? I would love to do it all again. Like I say, I was so fortunate. Eddie really looked after me and gave me some massive opportunities. Probably more opportunities than my talent really warranted. Um, but I guess I just got stuck in and had a scrap and the fans enjoyed it, so... Yeah, but I miss it a lot. <laughs> a lot? Are you, are you considering something or not? No, I'm not. I, I, it's not. I promised my wife it was over. Um, promised my children it was over. And Jamie wouldn't train me and I wouldn't have anybody else train me. Jamie and Nigel would... Listen, my eyes aren't great anymore. That's, that's why I retired. And Jamie pulled me out of Madison Square Garden because I was getting double vision. And um, health is wealth. Do you know what I mean? I, I was never going to win a world title. You know, I wasn't good enough. Close. Yeah, but listen, I had a good go at it, but I'm a realist. And I'm happy and content with what I did. I always give 100%. I have no regrets. Um, but yeah, it's over for me. Now it's about focusing on my family, first and foremost, my business, and helping the, the next generation in Hull, you know, sending the elevator back down for them. Well, I'm glad you're in a good place. Um, and yeah, we look forward to a spectacular night tomorrow night. Hopefully for you, your guys' sake, Carl Frampton can do the business. Thanks very much, and IFL TV, thanks for all the years of support as well. I appreciate it. Nice words there, Tommy. Top man, and uh, we'll catch you right after Frampton's fight. Top man.